What's up, my dudes? I got that E-Road 40 on, and I'm going to see what all it's going to do in 20 laps on the 2015 James Stewart compound. And don't worry, this video is not going to be five hours long. I'm going to try to do it in somewhat intervals where I will go through here and run a couple laps, and then I'll, I'll skip like to lap six or something like that, and then I'll run a couple more laps, and I'll skip to you know, lap 12 or 13 and run a couple more laps. So I'll kind of be showing it like that, not just every single lap because that would take forever. But uh, we're going to see what it does. So E-Road on 40, and I'm planning on making this quite the series here where I go around and just see what, you know, the E-Road will do on certain tracks and kind of what kind of rut styles you could expect to have on these different tracks. Oh, I know I'm getting some lag already on this track with it. Um, I think that what really kills your uh, PC capabilities is when you get on any track that's over like, uh, you know, 200 megabytes or whatever. If you get anything like that and you got the E-Road on, it's going to definitely put a little strain on it. But without the terrain deformation stuff on, uh, this track doesn't lag at all for me. I mean, none. So that just kind of goes to show you it does put some pressure on the PC and I've not rode on this track in forever, but uh, I'm about to die right here. <laughs> um, I haven't rode on this track in a while, the actual motocross portion. I'm, I'm a little bit more used to the layout of the MX Bikes JS7 compound. So this is a little bit confusing right here at the beginning, but um, it's going to take a lot of, lot of laps to even really notice it doing anything so um, I mean I'll probably what I'll do here is run the first and second lap and then go in there and wait quite I'll just run quite a few more laps uh, and then see what it does I'm I'm guessing that some of these pre-baked ruts is just gonna dig those quite a bit further down and then like right here ooh. Well, already crashing quite a bit. <laughs> um, I think I could actually develop a, a completely new rut there to the inside. Um, but it's going to be difficult because, you know, it's a, it's a long motocross track. When you really think about how much time it takes to get all the way back around just to put one more rut down. <laughs> it's like when you think about one bike in that sense, it's it's almost ridiculous. I'm about to flatland. Woo! I don't know how to save that shit. Um it's pretty crazy when you think of it in that sense of like, oh my gosh, that takes forever to get all the way back around with one bike just to put one little rut there. Uh, if you had more bikes, it wouldn't be that extreme, but um, when it's just solo mode, it's it's going to be a lot, it's just going to take time to really rut up to any degree. And somebody did actually comment on one of my videos and said, set the E-Road to 15 and run a you know, a shitload of laps on it, and it'll actually, whoa, I thought there was a corner there, <laughs> um, that different layout on MX bikes, um, somebody, you know, told me to go in there and do that, and, uh, it should actually make more, like, ruts that you think it would, because when you have the road set as high as 40, it's, it's digging down quite a bit, and maybe sometimes it doesn't really make as good of, uh, ruts that you think it would, so I'm just gonna play around with it, and, you know, do all different kinds of, uh, e-road levels on these videos and just see what e-road level does what on a certain particular track but i mean you're not going to be able to tell shit these first couple laps and it's kind of tricky with a track like this that already has those pre-baked ruts in pretty much every corner um because it's you then you really really can't tell what it's doing um so it's just going to take a couple laps here but i think that on that uh that kind of third corner i think it is where you really hit that long sweeper it's got a pretty big outside berm and you you kind of uh you hit that bigger tabletop like right beside the the supercross track there i think that you can probably get one of those inside ruts just as big as that outside berm if i hit it every single lap but what's going to be tricky here is it's going to really start kickering out the faces of these jumps and my ass is just going to go flying in some random directions once I get it rutted up good enough here. But okay, let's just get this second lap done through. That's something I really haven't uh, experimented just a crap load with the actual the way it, you know, forms the kickers and stuff. I can't even remember which line I took on the first lap. <laughs> That's how, you know, long the lap times are here. But, okay, I was going to run this up 
right here, maybe try to develop a completely different rut line. Uh, maybe cutting the track a little bit there, but that's okay. We ain't worried about it, dog. <laughs> we can shave some time off cutting the track, but uh, all right. So I think this will be an interesting video series, and I have a, quite a few more video series that I have planned out. Whoa, some of these bigger jumps, when you haven't hit them in a while, it can be a little bit tricky. Um, I've got probably five or six different video series I've just got sitting on the back burner. I just got to fucking do it, you know? Got to make videos on it. Um, and they're, they're pretty unique stuff. I think some of them, some people have kind of done some aspects of before, but... Um, that's what I want to really get into. I'm still going to continue to do the track reviews and stuff like that on Simulator, but I want to get into some different kind of cool series and stuff like that where we uh, can really uh, do just different stuff, basically. So I will see you guys in about three or four, five, six, seven laps, something like that. So, Okay, so here we are, lap six. That took a long time. I definitely have developed some pretty hefty, hefty roughness here. That is probably the biggest thing I've noticed is just the roughness has expanded quite a bit. And what I've done is I've tried to stay in a lot of these inside ruts so that I can try to build those up as big as the more so outside ruts. You probably can't tell as much because this is one of those tracks that, like I said, has all those pre-baked ruts to it. But right here, you can probably tell... You know, this inside rut was not that big on lap one, so I've really grooved it in to where it's actually a lot better than the outside now. So, um, but just remember, I have purposely tried to stay on only the inside ruts. So that's built some roughness up the inside there. Um, I've purposely tried to stay on the insides, uh, so that's why it's developed it that good, but it's kind of cool though how it you know it really does can make the inside rut way more viable than the outside after you do a couple laps on it but what i've noticed about kind of you can see these ruts right here going up that jump face when, when you talk about what the erode does on jump faces all it really does is cups out like right the base of the the actual jump face itself it really doesn't build ruts you know up the jump face like you would think it would so that was something i i for sure noticed that was pretty interesting that uh it really just kind of cups out the the very bottom base of the jump face so it gives you somewhat of that kicker feel but as far as like just solid straight line groove ruts it's not really doing it as much uh as i would have thought on the jump faces now right there you've seen how i kind of grooved that inside rut a little bit more and um so that's kind of what i noticed it just just rough at the it's almost like you had a soft dirt style track where you just you cup out all of your actual transitions not so much the jump face itself it's kind of what it feels like a little bit but um, I was trying to take this inside a couple laps and then kind of groove around double inside and then come back over here and take this inside. You can't even hardly tell it's rutted right there, but so that's lap seven. So we're about halfway through. So, I mean, if you don't really focus on taking one rut line, you're not really going to be able to develop it that good by yourself um, in this amount of laps. You're, you're just actually really not. That surprises me, um, even on E-Road 40. Uh, so, yeah, that, that's something to keep in mind. Uh, it definitely develops them pretty good, but I think the biggest reason why these ruts feel a little bit more meaty, it's like, whoa, okay, I'm actually building this inside quite a bit, is strictly because there was already a pre-baked rut there, so it's already kind of guided me properly through the corner to build that rut, uh, better if, if you can think about that in a kind of more expanded sense um, you know whereas if there was no pre-baked ruts I would have to go in there and really focus twice as hard to build the rut properly throughout the corner whenever I was going through but here when you it, even if you just have a really really small smoothed off uh, rut berm in the corner it's still guiding you properly through the corner to build your rut so Okay, here we are, about to be on lap 15. Just wanted to give you guys a quick little one-lapper update here. So, it's kind of funny how, like, right there on, I would say, lap 9 or 10, it gets to a rough point that almost seems unrideable. And then it's kind of like you, 
it's like you rut all of that roughness down some more so it almost like it goes from being super rough and then kind of smooths back out a little bit more once you rut it down more i know that probably makes absolutely no sense but it really does kind of do that a little bit where it it goes back and forth between rideability because you're kind of rutting down the roughness that you've already put there but there are some sections that just woo shoo buddy They've just about become unrideable, <laughs> um, and I've tried to stay in the same inside ruts on most of the the pre-baked rut line sections, but uh, some sections like this right here, they just randomly just get absolutely jacked. I mean, it's just like roughness, random, uh, kind of almost aidsy roughness everywhere, so you got to be pretty careful there. Ooh, little short, little short, um, but... The inside ruts, some of them aren't developing quite as much as I had originally anticipated. I thought at this point, like this one right here, would have already been quite a bit bigger, but it's really not the case. Um, now, the, the jump faces, now at this point on lap 15, I really am starting to notice some of the, the actual lips of the jumps are starting to get like lowered in areas. So you, it kind of looks like somebody that pre- went in there and kind of lowered um you know certain parts of the width of the actual jump peaks of the faces so that that was something cool that i noticed it's definitely getting some lowered spots like that so you'll see it like right here you can kind of see it if you look real close there's a lowered spot and then right over here there's a lower couple lowered spots right there on that jump face you probably couldn't see it at all but um it's definitely there, so that, that is a good sign. Now, some of these little sections, see, they're not really ru like roughing up all that bad, like some of those other sections are. So it's interesting how some sections seem to get super rough, and then some sections don't really get all that rough. Um, I don't know if it's just how, like, kind of the nature of how I'm hitting it, or, you know, kind of doing it on accident in a sense. I don't really know. You can see I've really developed some brand new ruts right there on that outside line where you can kind of square up this inside rut. I fucked up this rut a little bit here. I didn't hit it quite square enough every single lap, so it's definitely getting a little bit janky. But, um, and then right here, there is a fucking hole, a gopher hole right there. If you hit that mother, you're going over, dude. So it will develop some, like, basically end your career uh, little bumps and stuff that you can't really hardly see that good so you do have to be careful but that's probably one of my favorite ruts right there that i've made um but it is cool how it kind of develops it i know i said i was only going to do one lap but whatever uh I, it's cool how man this section got fucking ridiculous rough it's pretty sick how like you know you develop those inside ruts and you think those are going to be really good but then those get so rough that it's like oh well maybe that that outside rut that I haven't went in yet would be faster than the inside rut now. So it's cool how you go back and forth, kind of like you would in real life, of different line options there. Um, so we're on lap 16. God, <laughs> I'm telling you, dude, running 16 laps on this track feels like you're just sitting here for three weeks riding on this mother. I mean, it is not a joke. Ugh. So that jump definitely rutted some right on the actual uh lower transition but uh yeah so i will be back on lap 19 and 1920 we'll see the final result here okay so here we are about to come around on lap 19 one little trick thing that i noticed that you can do if you're just running on the same exact line every lap like i'm doing here is you can kind of like come up to an inside rut but be just a little bit to the outside and kind of dodge all of that roughness that you made and then right at the last second you can pitch it into that rut and so you can basically dodge all the roughness that you made but still get in the rut that you made there so that's kind of a bit of a little bit of a trick life hack that you can do if you're doing this ooh okay well there's a little double crash but overall i think that it rutted up okay in areas, not quite as good as I thought. A couple of these insides I thought would have been way better, but you can definitely see the rut I've made right here. Oh, look at all this roughness. Holy shit. It, you got to be on it. I mean, you got to be like not trying to talk, not trying to think about anything else. It, it basically turns a, a smooth track into an AMA style track. That's what I noticed. You know, this track 
was always more of a smooth, chill, flow kind of track, but when you run it up like this, it turns it into a straight-up AMA, like, you really have to pay attention to what you're doing, so, um, but it's, it's kind of like, see, right here, I can kind of go to the outside, dodge all of that roughness, and still hook in this rut right here, I'm just gonna try to go my normal speed that I was going instead of going slower to try to show you guys everything because when you try to go slower it seems like you crash a lot more doing that but JK let me just crash anyways but uh yeah dude running 20 laps on a two minute some odd track that is ugh, that's rough on the mind <laughs> uh, this feels like a freaking workout right here dude oh my god what the I'm losing it boys Ran 20 laps. I really wasn't crashing all that much. I know I probably sound like a liar right now, but I really wasn't. I mean, I was able to flow pretty decently on it, um, most of the sections, but it really does take you about 20 laps to develop anything really noticeably with the E40 on there, so... I mean, that's that's what it's come down to. It's it's not like, oh my gosh, every part of this track is completely beat up. That's not the case at all. It's like, just kind of where I've been going, that's where it's beat up. So, um, so, I mean, I could just, you know, come up to this one section over here and basically totally skip where I was going and it's smooth as silk, you see? So now I'm, I'm almost like restarting that whole rut process on that on every other area so let me just tell you like this if i would have just basically evenly dispersed all of my riding on every line of the track it would have basically been like running five laps on one spot so think back to to what i was at basically on lap five there and that's kind of what every rut of the track would have looked like not i mean it wouldn't have been very ruddy whatsoever almost probably not even noticeable but when you stay in one line you say i've totally developed that brand new inside rut there so i don't know like there's some cool aspects of it and then some other not as cool aspects um kind of what it comes down to but here we are almost on lap 20 that is a really cool rut i developed there this got some roughness so i would have thought that rut would have just dug down a lot more but uh you can see this ama style roughness here <laughs> pretty tricky no doubt here's that gopher hole fuck nearly tosses my ass over every time but um it is cool on some of the jump faces, like I was telling you, some places are lowered, so if you're used to hitting the same spot every time at the top of the jump face being lowered, and in one lap you just kind of accidentally uh, cut over a little bit to where you haven't uh, rode, and it's like the normal jump face height, you, you feel like you shoot off to the moon, um, especially when you're running 20 laps on it like this, but yeah, that's, a, that's about how it developed here. Um, super amounts of roughness here for some reason this part of the track roughed up way worse than any other part uh, and i don't really have any explanation for that um it's just a straight section i mean look at look at how rough Ugh. but i mean it, it really does get to this point where you almost like rut up your roughness and smooth it out in a sense kind of weird how it does that but dude i'm tired of this track after 20 laps Woo! I think the next video I do like this is going to have to be on a Supercross track or something a little bit shorter. This was rough, homie. This wasn't no joke. But uh, right here, you can see uh, definitely what it's developed on some of these sections. And then right here on this jump, peak. Oh, coming up a little bit short. I don't know why I'm like... It's kind of like when you're talking for some reason, you... uh. You're kind of running it like 80% instead of 100%. I don't know why I kind of have that habit of doing that, but this little inside rut didn't develop quite like I thought it would, as much as I thought it would anyways, for running in it every single lap. That's what you got to remember. That's what I was doing, running in the same exact inside rut every single lap. So that one kind of developed a cool little... Uh, the gopher hole was like right before you jumped off the face of the jump. So that was that was a cool thing. But you can see it took me 20 laps to get this inside rut at least similar to those other ruts there. Those pre-baked ones. But that inside is so rough now that it's almost not even viable uh, when you compare it to the other ones. So that's kind of how that develops there. But let me see if I can pause this. Okay, here we go. Perfect. 
So you can see how that used to be just a perfect flat uh, jump face at the top, and now it's right in directly in front of me. If you look up the jump face, it's kind of lowered right there. So that's about how much it does with 20 laps of it. So you can see it's pretty minute on what it does on the actual tip of the jump face, but it doesn't take a whole lot to get you squirrely off of a you know 100 foot jump. So it definitely affects it for sure, but. That, this is one of the smoothest parts of the track, and I don't know why. It just it stayed smooth for some reason. It's like the ruts, the, the ruts themselves just stayed pretty smooth, so it made it quite a bit more simple uh, to ride in it. But yeah, so this is kind of the first video of this little series here I'm going to do on some uh, different tracks, seeing how they rut up and stuff. Hey dudes, I just wanted to let you know that there is a link in the description to donate to me if you want to support me. And if you can't or you just don't want to, I totally understand. That's why it's completely optional. But I will be listing my top 10 donators at the end of every single future video. And I will shout out every new donator at the end of a video, even if they're not top 10. So I want to let you guys know that I have all of my different playlists on my front page, whether it be game specific playlist or series specific playlists. So if you're looking for any particular game or particular series that you want to watch, I have it all laid out there in a pretty organized manner on my front page. And my email address is spencerturley at live.com, no space, no capital. And I do accept sponsorship offers. And you guys should also follow me on Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, PlayStation Network, Xbox Live, Steam, all that different stuff at Spencer Turley, no space, no capital. So anyways, I appreciate you guys watching the videos. Later, dudes.